Welcome in the 15th episode. Today we will implement the logic to remove the square once completed. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so you will not miss any future episode I release. Ok, so let's get started. So as you remember in the last episode, we have implemented the logic to remove the specific line. So if you complete any of the line, the line is automatically just deleted once complete. So there is still something missing, so once you complete the square, the square is actually not cleared out. So today we're gonna implement the logic actually to clearing out the square, any of the square when you complete it. So in order to do that we need to open our project and let's uh, first of all go to our scene folder and open the game scene. So now let's go to the scripts and then let's go to our game, grid, and open the grid script. Okay, and now inside our grid script, let's go to the function, check if any line is completed, and inside this function, we have implemented checking the horizontal line and then vertical line, so the columns and the rows, and below these four loops, let's add another one to check if we have completed the square. So I will just put double comments and let's put a double double slash and then let's put squares squares so we're going to check for the squares here and then for var square is equal to zero square we want to then in create the list so list of the integers and I will call it data will be equal to new a list of the integers and we want to specify the size to be 9 because we have 9 squares and now we need to loop through all of the line data indicator so for var index is equal to 0 index is less than 9 index plus plus and now we want to push our data so data dot add and let's grab our line indicator dot square data add square and then index okay let's put column and then outside of this for loop we want to add to our lines so lines dot add and we want to add our data to array okay so this is pretty much it to in order to remove our squares so let me just quickly explain you this logic so make sure you put this logic in check if any line is completed function so first of all we know that we have a nine squares in the game so we loop through all of the squares then we get our data the indexes for our squares and then inside our line indicator as you remember in the last episode if you go to the square data we have implemented the row by row the index for the square so the first square has indexes as you see here 0 1 2 9 10 11 18 19 20 so 0 1 2 9 10 11 18 19 20 so we're just grabbing the, the data from here. So if you go back to our grid class and you see that we're looping through the size of the array and we copy every single value from here into our data. Okay, so th th this is pretty much what we're doing. And then we're appending this to our lines. So the lines will then be passed to our check if square are completed function and then inside here we are checking every single index for our square in the grid and check what the status for that for that square is if all of the squares are occupied then of course the line or square is completed if not then we didn't complete the square or the line so hopefully this is clear at, uh, at this point. 
So let me go back here. So we can now test this code. So this is small addition to our class. Let's save everything. Let's go back to Unity. And let's try it out. So I will just press play. And then let's try to complete any square. So hopefully I will be I'll be able to do that. Okay, maybe the middle one. So as you see I have completed the squares, the square and all of the all of the squares are cleared out and uh, we can carry on playing. So this is uh, this is this part which we have to solve. So I think this works fine. Let me try another square, maybe this one. As you see we have completed the square and the line and both of them are disappeared at the same time. So that's correct. We of course gonna add some uh, nice effect to this. So when everything is removed, you will see the effect. I mean, the player will see the effect. So up to this point, everything works fine. So there is one more thing which I wanna do today. We, uh, I wanna just add the basic implementation for the points. So once you, once the player complete the line or the squares, there will be like a 10 points added to the account and we have that we, we will have the points displayed here so let's stop this project let's uh, go to the file and then save let's go down to our scripts folder and open the game event class okay so inside this class we need to add one more event so right at the top i will put public static action and this is going to be the int and I will call it add score. Add scores, okay? So we want to accept the int integer parameter parameter. So then we can call add scores with the with the braces and put the value in. So as you see, these actions did not accept any parameters, but this one will take the integer parameter. Okay, let's save everything. And now let's go back to our grid class. Let's go back to our check if any line is completed. And as you see, like when you scroll down, you will see that we have we have put some comments, add scores here. So let me put above this comment one more variable. So this is going to be the var total scores. will be equal to and then we want to add let's say we're going to add 10 scores every time the player complete the line or the square so we want to get the 10 times how many lines has been completed so i will just copy this okay so if player will complete two lines at the same time he will get 20 scores 20 points if three then 30 and so on okay and then total scores and of course, if he don't know, if he did not complete any of it, this score completed lines will be zero. So ten times zero will be zero. Okay. And then we want to call uh, we want to call the game event. So game events dot add scores, and we want to pass our total score. Okay. So we can remove this comment now because we are adding the points. So everything works fine, but now we need to create actually the UI and the class to actually handle the scores. So let's me let's save everything. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, and then let's go to our canvas. And then I will just right click on the canvas and then UI. Let's actually create the uh, the empty object first. So first let's add the game object, and I will just call it score window. score window and then right click on the score window UI and then text and I will just call it score text score text let's actually position this text correctly actually I'm gonna position change position for the score window so let's move this text to be here and right on the top somewhere here Let's change the size for our score text. So I will just select the score text 
and maybe change the size to be 80. Okay, when you change the size, you will see the text disappear because we need to change the width and the height as well. So I will just put the 200 for the width and then 50 for the height and change the text to be 00. zero. Okay, I think we need to put more, more height. Okay, when you put more height, so let's set the height to be 100. And we have the, let's say, zero scores at the beginning. And let's make this font to be, font style to be bold. You can change the font if you, if you wanna. I will leave it as it is, just I will change the alignment to be in the middle and in the middle. Okay, so we have our scores. Text, let's actually now the, uh, add the class. So let's go to our scripts, go to the game, right click, create C sharp script. I will call this script scores. Scores, let's open the score script. Okay, let's remove the update function and let's remove this comment from the start function. And then right at the top, let's put public text. But in order to use text, we need to add using statements. So right at the top, we're going to put using unity engine dot UI. OK, and now we can use the text. So public text and I will call it score text. Score text. And then let's add two functions. So first one will be on enable and on disable. So public. Actually, I will use the shortcut. So Control Shift M. And then on enabled. Let's tick it. And then on disable. Let's tick it. And then OK. So as you see, you you will need to you can write it yourself or you can use the shortcut. So this, the shortcut was Control Shift and M on the keyboard. And then we need to subscribe to our game event. So we need to subscribe to our add scores event. So inside the on enable, let's call the game events dot add scores plus equal add scores. Okay, and then I will duplicate this line of code, move it to on disable and make sure you change this plus to minus. And now we can add this add scores function. So right below, I will put private void add scores. And of course we need to accept the integer parameter. So int scores. Okay. If you remove the integer parameters from here, as you see, you will have an error because this, this event accepts the integer as a parameter. So make sure you put the integer in. Okay, and then we need to add one more pri private variable. So right at the top, let's put private int and it's going to be the scores, maybe current scores. current scores and I will just get this current scores and inside the start method I will set it to zero and then inside our add scores I will I will just grab this current scores plus equal scores okay so this is gonna be the our total score number and we want to add just the new scores to it and let's add one more function so private Void, and I will call it display scores, or maybe update score text. Update score text, and this function will get our score text dot text will be equal to current scores dot to string. And we want to call this update score text from add scores. 
and we want to call this update score text from our start method as well. Okay, so this is two places where we want to call this function. So now once you've done it, let's save everything. Let's go back to Unity. Let's select our score window, grab our scores script and drop it into this object. And now we need to initialize our score text. So grab our score text from here and drop it into this score text variable. Make sure it's initialized. Okay. So now we can just go to the file and then save and then file save project. And now when you press play, let's try actually if everything works. So let's try to complete any of the of the line. So as you see, once the line is completed, we have 10 scores. Try, let's try to complete the, the, the full square. Okay, if I will be able to. Okay, we should, we have another 10 scores and then let's try to get the, the horizontal line. So this one and here. So we have a 40 points because we completed the horizontal line plus the square. So everything seems to be works fine. Let's try again. As you see, when you restart your game, the scores is going back to zero. So I think that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we will look after how we can add the bonuses messages to the, to the game. So once the player complete more than one line, there will be like a bonus pop-up message. And also we're going to add some the implementation for the best score, which is going to be saved in our binary file. So when the player actually reach the best score, he will see that, uh, that value from the previous game. So that's it for this episode. If you liked this series, please consider subscribing to this channel and leave a like. Any issue with the implementation, leave me a comment below this video. So thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.